Welcome to the Be That 1% Podcast. I'm your host, James Silvis, Mindset Specialist and Performance Coach. And here on the show, I'm going to challenge you to think deeper, commit to greatness, and develop a stronger mindset. You'll hear stories from those who are living life on their terms, and you'll receive strategies that will help you level up. So the question is, are you ready to be your own 1%? Let's get started. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Be That 1% podcast. Today, we're jumping into consistency. And this is a a topic that I've talked about before. I think it's important to constantly uh, explain and dive into consistency. And I'll be the first to, to talk about how this podcast has been such a tool for me since the end of 2018 when it began and the level of consistency that I've had with this all the way up until this year has been amazing. I've learned so much about content, about my skills of communicating ideas and simplifying concepts and creating frameworks for better understanding has only helped me become a better communicator. Uh, feel like I'm giving back to you know the the people that I serve, and and doing a small part in making this world a better place through the content that I'm that I'm putting out, and so I'm grateful for this platform. I'm grateful for you listening. I'm grateful for uh, the lessons that keep <laughs> unfolding in my own life and and the things that have happened to me you know throughout the course of my life and and then also into this year. And there hasn't been that level of consistency in the last couple months with the podcast because my focus has been on other things. It's been on creating uh, new services, you know, like Forge, my uh, all men's immerse, immersive leadership experience in Costa Rica. It's been focused on my sports psychology side of the business with um, sports teams around the country. Um, and It's been morphing into one-on-one with companies and and individuals. And so that's why my consistency with the podcast has dropped off and and my energy has been reallocated. And in that time, uh, especially this year, in the time of me kind of taking a step back from the podcast, I've also had time to think about what type of content I want to continue to talk about on this podcast, you know, topics that you all have said you've loved, that you want to listen more to, um, and also what's resonating deeply with me at this time in my life, being a father of two, my amazing wife going back to uh, met, uh, her, get her master's degree in marriage and family therapy, the types of clients I'm serving, the challenges I'm seeing both in my life and in theirs, and how you know I'm finding solutions and creative, unique strategies to, to navigate life's challenges. And so I'm excited to, to bring back some of the things that I've been marinating on, I've been learning, I've been diving deep into, and what better way to start than with consistency? You know, it's something that we all know is important. And when we're consistent in the things that we say we want or we you know love or we value, those things can only enrich right? The, the, the value of whatever we're putting our time and attention to will increase. Wherever our energy flows, wherever our focus flows, our energy flows, our, the thing that we're putting our focus on blossoms. Um, and that could be, quote unquote, good or bad. <laughs> you can focus on bad things and you can get more bad things. You focus on good things, you're going to get more good things, right? So, but with consistency, how can we be more consistent with what we want? And I think this, if we inverse this, right, like what causes inconsistency, I think that can also help us be consistent. So that's the way I'm going to look at it today. I always find that looking at it from the negative sometimes helps learn faster because our brains are just wired for negativity. That's just, it stands out. It's more important. It has more weight. Therefore, it's um, easier to digest. And so, These are kind of some common patterns that I've seen over the last nine years doing this work and being in the trenches with my clients and 
and also navigating some of life's challenges in my own experience. And so when we can get a good grasp of catching ourselves in these patterns, we can make the shifts necessary to continue to dive into the places and, and the people and in the environments that we want to be in, right? So the first thing, and this is this may be the biggest thing because without this, nothing else falls in line, right? And it's not having a clear win, right? And by win, winning is has gotten a, an interesting connotation over the last, I don't know, three to five years with it being associated with competitiveness and maybe over aggression and it's not always about winning. And, and what I mean by winning in this context is what is a win to you? I think we have to know what that is because that's what creates a clear yes from a clear no. How do you know if you're making progress? How do you know if you're living the life that you want? How do you know if you are a success? How do you know if you're winning? If you don't know the answer to that question, you're probably going to be playing someone else's game. And if you're playing someone else's game, you're going to be playing by their rules and there's always going to be an internal conflict in you between what you want to do and what you feel you have to do. And those competing priorities, those competing, um, you know, split, that split of energy is always going to create too many fractures and your energy is going to get drained very, very quickly. It'll be too many things to focus on. So without metrics, there's no way to hold ourselves accountable. Without metrics, without a clear win, there's nothing, there's not really a direction for us to go in. And without a vision, without a direction, without a destination, we get lost. We can get distracted by pleasures, by superficial, shiny things, and then we can find ourselves in a position that we never thought we would be, or pursuing something that we don't really want, feeling empty inside, and then regretting the work that we do, waking up the next day, and our vitality slowly gets sucked out of our bodies and puts us in a place that we don't want to be, right? So the first thing is we got to define what is winning to us, to me, to you. And once you have that, okay, now we can start putting in some, some boundaries and some, some structure, some, some goals, some, <laughs> some clear yeses and nos, right? So without that, we're lost. So that's, that's the first thing. That's what creates inconsistency is not having a clear north star. The second is people pleasing, right? Naturally, we don't want to hurt people's feelings. We don't want to be the bad person. We don't want to have to say no to someone, especially if they're, you know, kind or they're trying to be nice to us and we avoid conflict and we don't want to to stand firm in something. If, if there's any sort of tension, it's like, ooh, slip away. Well, if you're gonna remain consistent, it's not always gonna be a beautiful walk in the park to be consistent. You're gonna have to enforce discipline and sacrifice. And with that comes boundaries and hard conversations and saying no and making no a complete sentence, which, when you hear that, some of you are probably squirming, and that's good. That's how you know that's an area for you to explore, is if you have that reaction. Where is it that I least want to look? Okay, well, that's probably where you should go first, because if you do that, that's a 10x growth opportunity as opposed to maybe a 2x growth opportunity, and if we're wanting our life to change, you know, geometrically, not just a incremental but like massive shifts, then we gotta go to the places that make us most comfortable. And people pleasing is really um, just embedded into almost everybody. I would say everybody, but then some people can you know, train themselves out of it. You know, whether you're a leader of a company and, and you're, not, you're not challenging people to head to the North Star, or whether you're in a relationship and that relationship is draining your energy and they're not supportive and each time you try to have an honest conversation, they block you out and it's kind of like you're spinning your wheels. You know, that's not gonna help you 
remain consistent. So something needs to be done. Something needs to be enforced. Some, some line needs to be drawn. Some standard needs to be implemented. Some boundary needs to be enforced so that the appropriate energy goes to the right places. If those things don't happen, people spend their whole day thinking about something that they should say and never do say, and then that compounds over a week, month, year, and then you kind of lose your voice and and you get even more nervous to say something and <laughs> it kind of just begins to unravel from there, right? So by by saying no, by having boundaries, by maintaining and managing your energy better in this area, you'll have more energy to allocate to the things you want to be consistent in. Number three is what causes inconsistency is not having small wins. You know, having big challenging goals is is healthy and good. And I think we all need that. And we need daily wins. Daily progress. How do we know if we're progressing? That kind of goes back to number one, which is what's the win, right? You work backwards from there. What would I need to do every day to get closer to that? A daily win, a daily commitment. When you have daily commitments, it converts a goal from being a goal to being a lifestyle choice. The things that you do daily is lifestyle, right? And so if your goal is just a goal that you pr pursue three to five days a week, it's very difficult to keep that going, right? And I'll give you an example. I just... Uh, you know, led it my my first international men's retreat, which I mentioned earlier, called Forge. And one of the things that all these men agreed upon when they left Forge, which is a whole week long, was to do 365 days of movement. And the movement had certain parameters around it so that you know if you hit it or not. But daily, 365 days, no days off, no misses, no slips, no... I was tired, I was traveling, I'm sick, I, no misses. And I'm happy to report that we're on day, I think we're on day 92 since then, since since uh, the, the retreat. The, and so when it's daily, there's a different level of commitment there. It's, a, it's again, a lifestyle choice, not just a goal preference. So what is the daily wins? If you can chunk whatever that thing is that you're wanting to be commit committed to, chunk it down into one to three things to do every day, there's gonna be progress that's made. And when that progress is made consistently at least 64 days, that's a habit. That's a new identity. That puts you in a completely different ballpark 90 days from now because of a lifestyle choice. And it's not that that one to three things that you're doing every day is like massively difficult. It's it's uncomfortable, yes, but completely doable. And by doing it daily, your bar for hard things rises. Your your capacity to hold discomfort increases. Your grit, stamina and determination grows. And all of that continues to funnel back into the thing that you're committed to. So whether it's a fitness goal, it's you know a, a reading goal, it's a business goal, it's you know these things like playing with my kids has been a daily thing. I'm a, you know I have a four year old and a two year old, so <laughs> any and every moment they're like, Daddy, Daddy, can you play? And my goal is to say yes as often as I can, and it's on my daily wins. Did I play with my kids? That's a lifestyle right? Reading, or better yet, journaling on my daily things. Did I journal today? Right? It's, it's daily commitments. And why are those commitments there? Because you define that clear win, and the win is important to you. You find that meaning, find that purpose. You know, if it's for your family, if it's for a bigger cause that you believe in, you know, you have the win and then you have the why you want to win, right? And then you enforce the the boundaries, which is combating the people pleasing. And now you have a small win that you're doing every day. It gives you meaning, gives you purpose to wake up. And again, you compound that over 90 days, six months, a year. 
totally different person. So that was number three. Not having small wins is what leads to inconsistency. Number four of why we're inconsistent is you're short-term minded. We live short-term gratification, dopamine hit, rich type behaviors. Well, how come I don't have it yesterday? Well, because good things take time. That's why. And you wouldn't want it fast. Because the things that you get fast, you don't appreciate. If you don't appreciate, you don't truly understand what it is that you have. It's only in the quote-unquote slow, intentional, methodical actions taken every day that you understand the nuances. You understand the the value. You have more wisdom that you can pull from the process because you're in it and you're actually aware that you're in it. And that requires a long-term approach. You know, the, the example of the bamboo tree. Bamboo tree, you plant it. It doesn't grow for four years. You have to water it every day, every day for four years. You're not seeing anything above ground. And then what happens at the beginning of that fifth year? It starts breaking through the surface, and within 90 days, that thing shoots up to 100 feet. Wow. Four years of quote-unquote nothing. Why? Because you couldn't see something? Well, what you couldn't see was the root structure that was growing to support that massive growth. Every overnight success that you've seen, that you've heard of, that you've studied, that you're inspired by, happened because of the decades of work that they put in before that moment happened. So the biggest, one of the biggest problems with society, and I even find myself getting in, looped in this, I got to catch myself too, is like we look at the wins that someone has and we just, <laughs> we only see that part of their story. And, and we're not taking the time to go back and study their story on how all the failures, all the dedication, all the time that no one sees behind the scenes, the sleepless nights, the long hours, the, the sacrifice, the near bankruptcies, all, whatever, we don't see that. Maybe we don't want to see that because then that would mean it takes time and it takes work and it takes effort. But that's how the life works. So commit to the process. Rather than having growth with a timeline, have growth without a finish line. Because the process is never over. And this requires a mastery approach to life. How much can I learn? How masterful can I be in the thing that I want to do? Long-term minded, right? Number five on why we're not consistent. Negative self-talk. Negatives weigh more than positives. So, one person out of 10 people says something like, you suck, you don't deserve to be here, you shouldn't be on the team, who the hell hired you, da 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 That comment is going to stick out way more than all of the nine people that may praise you. It's just how we operate. And so what we got to understand is that since our brains are wired that way, we got to, we, it's a daily job, again, lifestyle, right? We have to control the narrative in our mind. And rather than listening to outside sources, not that you shouldn't seek feedback, but we, we, our own internal voice needs to be the most important voice. And we need to reward the effort and the progress, <clears throat> which goes back to why having those small wins is so important. Because if I have the metrics, if I have the vision, and I know that I'm making progress every day, then my narrative in my mind should not be, oh, I'm not there yet, therefore I'll never get there. It should be, I'm making progress. I'm winning daily. And if I do that every day for 90 days minimum, I have a new narrative in my head. It doesn't mean that the negative won't affect me anymore. It just means I'll catch it quicker and I'll reframe it faster. Right? And so rather than trying to be a perfectionist or has everything has to be a certain way, which never works, you have to be a progressionist, right? Is there progress? Did I make progress today? Yes, that's a win. That's something that I need to continuously, hour by hour, maybe minute by minute, need to keep telling myself, right? Got to catch that self-talk. That's what creates our reality and, you know, our state of being. And whatever our state is creates the, the more of the story, which creates more of how we show up in the world. And, and uh, that dictates a lot, maybe everything. And then the last thing, number six, why we're inconsistent is we don't have the right team. We don't have the right people in our corner. We don't have the people that are going to be honest with us and tell us when we're slipping. 
We don't have the people who will stand for us when we feel low and remind us who we are. We don't have the people who, um, you know, will be there late at night or we can call and just open up and share something with. And, and maybe partly that's your fault for not opening up and exploring those new relationships. Maybe it's because you haven't allowed the relationship to go there with your current people. And maybe it also is that you just haven't found those people yet. But the more clear you get on the f- previous five, that will only help strengthen slash attract the right people into your life. And when you have the right people in your life, man, does it make a difference. It's, it unifies energy it amplifies the belief in yourself but also the meaning in your life every happiness every fulfillment research study that has ever been done always attributes the most important thing to people's happiness and wellness and fulfillment being relationships people around you we're humans we need community who's in your community. Some of you are letting people in when they shouldn't have ever been in in the first place. Some people are allowing, some of you are allowing others to take advantage. Some of you are not pouring back into the people who have poured into you. But relationships is what's going to help not only you get to your, whatever your winning is, but also sustain it and share it, which is even better. So attracting the right team, continuing to pour into the right team, making sure that those around you feel loved by you. First and foremost, because that's the first thing we can control, right? We can't control what other people do, but we can demonstrate what we want to be done in that relationship and hope that that is either reciprocated or co-created in some way. And so making sure that you're sending those gratitude texts to say, hey man, I know we haven't talked in a while, but just want to let you know I'm thinking about you and I hope you and the family are doing well and uh, you're in my prayers. It can be something as simple as that. It could be a, a monthly talk that you guys have. Something that acknowledges the value of the people that you have in your life. And so maybe after this, this podcast episode, you know, after this ends, you send an audio note to somebody, someone you haven't talked to in a while, someone maybe you talked to yesterday, but you didn't express your gratitude, you know? Let them know. Because... As you know, life is short. And how many how many deaths do we have to experience in our lives to realize the the how fragile those people are? And I have to catch myself in this too. So I'm not I'm not just I'm talking to you and I'm talking to myself. And so the right team. So to recap, what creates inconsistency? Not having a clear win. People pleasing. Not having small wins, daily wins. Number four, short-term mindedness. Number five, negative self-talk. And six, not having the right team or not leveraging the right team. Maybe you have the right people, you just haven't leveraged them or asked. And so when we begin to work on these things, not only, we could learn new skills, our business can skyrocket, our relationships can deepen, we can take on new hobbies. Our life can get even more richer than it is right now. And so implement whichever one of these you felt most connected to and know that as you continue to put time, effort, money, resources into these things, into whatever your win is, it's, it's honestly inevitable that it's going to happen. And how it happens may be completely different than what you think or want to happen. And that's what's cool. Because a lot of times I've been like, I want this. And I've kind of released it and trust the process and went to work on it. And then something even better happened. And it's something I could have never thought of. But now I'm on the path. I have new information because of my level of commitment. And with that new information, the vision expands. Very rarely, if ever, have I heard the vision shrinking <laughs> with more information. It's like, damn, I was thinking so small. Or wow, that that was it? That that oh man, I'm like way beyond that now. And it becomes this game of how far can I go, not how much can I get. 
All right? So thank you for being here. If you enjoyed this, please share this episode. Please share this podcast with whoever you feel needs it, would resonate with it. And please continue to uh, let me know what content resonates with you. And if you haven't done so already, please head over to iTunes. Uh, leave me a five-star review. Help me get this, this podcast, this word out to more people and uh, this message to the world so that we can continue to live on our terms and be our own 1%, be one of one. All right, much love, everybody. Till next time, peace. Peace.